we're going to look at a strategy for division called partial quotients. This strategy uh, is introduced sometimes in third grade, but for sure in fourth grade when they divide with a one-digit divisor. Uh, in fifth grade, we use the one-digit divisor as well as a two-digit divisor. So we're going to look at using the partial quotient strategy with two-digit divisors. Even when you're wanting to focus on computation and computational strategies, it's really good to have the problem presented in a word problem, in a scenario, because students will be able to use the scenario to kind of help make sense of what's going on with the numbers that are involved. So Sally has 384 cookies to put into bags for the children's hospital. She has 12 bags. How many cookies will she be able to put in each bag? So we see our total is the 384 cookies. So we know that's going to be our dividend. So we'll write that, 384, and then she has 12 bags to use to, for the cookies to be placed in. So we're going to put 12 as our divisor. Now, so the problem set up, 384 divided by 12. When using partial quotients, you do not start by dividing. You start by creating a set of cluster problems or a think bubble, and this think bubble is based on whatever your divisor is. And you want to think of your divisor in groups. So we start with one group of 12 in our cluster problem. And we know that's 12. And then we go next to 10 groups of 12. Starting in third grade, they work with multiples of 10 as factors. So 10 groups of 12. We know that that is 120. And then the next factor we want to use is 2. We learned that we can double any number to get the product when we're multiplying with 2. So we know that is 24. We go and we use the next multiple of 10, which is 20. 20 groups of 12. We know is 240. And they can think about this as if I know 10 times 12 is 120. If I double 120, then I'll get the product for 20 times 12. And then the next fact we use is 5. 5 are easy facts that the children seem to be able to uh, know easily. So 5 times 12 is 60. If they don't know 5 times 12 mentally is 60, they can use what they know about 10 times 12 being 120 and halving that, 120 uh, and half is 60, which is the same as 5 times 12. So these are the facts that students should use in their think bubble or cluster problem. Uh, one, the factor one, two, and five, and then multiples of ten. Those are the ones that you should start with. They can certainly use other facts they know, but most students know these for sure. So now we're ready to start finding out how many groups of twelve we can pull out of thirty-four. Three hundred eighty-four out of three hundred. So we look at our products over here and we try to find the product that is the closest to 384 without going over, of course. And we see that 20 groups of 12 is 240. So we've used 240 of our cookies and we have 144 cookies remaining. We go again to our products and our cluster problems and we look for a product that is as close to 144 without going over, and we see that 10 groups of 12, 10 groups of 12 is 120. Now we've used another 120 of our cookie, and we have 24 cookies left. We go to our cluster problems, and we see uh, two groups of 12 is exactly 24. So now we have used all 
384 of our cookies and we can find out how many cookies Sally is going to be able to place into each of the bags. So we go over here and we combine, add up the number of groups we were able to use and we see 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 2 more is 32. So Sally will be able to place 32 cookies in each bag. We can also represent this column as 384 divided by 12 equals 32. Okay, let's look at our next example problem. Joe is going to summer camp. The campers are divided into camp teams with 45 boys on each team. There are 675 boys attending the camp. How many teams will there be at Joe's camp? So we have 675 boys. Our divisor is a little bit larger this time. Like that. And we know there's going to be 45 boys on each of the teams, and we want to find out how many teams there'll be at the camp. So again, we look at our divisor, and we're thinking of groups of 45. So one group of 45 is equal to 45. Ten groups of 45 is equal to 400. 50. Two groups of 45 is equal to 90, doubling 45 and getting 90. 20 groups of 45, and really we're going to find out this is going to be too big, right? It's going to be 900. Because if we double 450, think about the 10 groups of 45. And that would be 900. So this bag, we can actually go ahead and scratch through. We know we won't use that because that's too large. And it's okay for students to do that, to kind of uh, see the, the magnitude of the numbers and go ahead and eliminate that one. So now we go to five. Five groups of 45. And we know that's going to be half of, what, 10 groups of 45? Plus, so that's going to be 225. Now we know we don't need to use the 50 groups of 45 because 20 was too large. So now we have problems that we can use to help us find out how many teams there will be at Joe's camp. So look at our products. Which of the products will get us closest to 675? And we see 10 groups of 45. 10 groups of 45 is 450. So we have 450 boys have been accounted for. So we have 225 boys still to go. So we look at our cluster problems, and there we see 225 in our list. When we use five groups of 45, there are 200. 25 boys used. So now we're down to zero boys. Now we look to see how many groups of 45 we were able to make and we see it's 15. So there will be 15 teams at Joe's camp with 45 boys on each team. So 65 boys divided by 45 is equal to 15. We'll look at one more. The candy factory is boxing up 1,128 pieces of chocolate into 51 boxes. Each box will have the same number of pieces. How many pieces of candy should be placed into each box? So in fifth grade, we do use a four-digit dividend along with a two-digit divisor. So this is an example for that. 1,128 pieces of candy, 51 boxes are being used. So again, we go over and we think of our divisor in groups. One group of 51 would be 51. 
ten groups of fifty one will be five hundred ten. Two groups of fifty one will be one hundred two. Twenty groups of fifty one will be one thousand twenty. Five groups of fifty one be 255. The way you can think about that is half of the 510. So it looks like we have enough information that we can start using our cluster problems to find out how many pieces of candy should be placed in each box. So our dividend is 1,128. We've looked at our products and our cluster problem. We can see 1,020 is really close. So we can use 20 groups of 51 is 1,020. So we've used 1,020 pieces of our, of our candy. And we have 108 pieces left still to put into boxes. So looking at our cluster problem, we see 102, and that two groups of 51, two groups of 51, will use up 102 pieces of our candy, and we have six pieces left. So we don't have any more groups of 51 to work with, we only have six pieces left. So we go over here, we find out how many groups of 51 are we able to use. 22. So for this, we have 22 pieces of candy will go in each box, and then there's going to be six pieces left over at the back. So it's a remainder of six. So as you are working with your students on partial questions, one of the most important parts of this strategy is the set of cluster problems. And remember, to work with the kids with the factors of 1, 2, and 5, and then the multiples of 10. Now, as they use this strategy and they want to use other factors in their cluster problems, that's great, but the key is to use what they know, so they're not struggling to create their cluster problems, it's using what they know to get that set of problems set up so that then the actual division is fairly simple.